Masters of the Universe Revelation is yet another show whose creator claims to be made for the OG fans, but once the OG fans open the box, they see that all those promises were a lie. With that being said, let's talk about it. The issues with the show start from the very beginning. Episode 1 barely begins and Teal doesn't take too long to start talking about how skillful and strong she is, because that's totally a good way to try to make the audience like her, am I right? <sighs> One could argue that the scene is a show set in the background about her, and how Tila came to be, given that we see her ordination ceremony a few minutes later. But I would also like to argue that it's also for the sake of setting her as a strong female character of this show, whose plot will mostly revolve around her, while simultaneously shoving aside the other main character the OG show fans wanted to see. Because this show does that. But honestly, I couldn't care less about what the creators intended to convey through this movement, because whatever it was, it was done by Tila literally bragging about how awesome she is, basically putting herself on top of a pedestal. But she can say that because she's really strong. Tila could be as strong as an army of hulks. Seth Lauda does basically no favors to a character in terms of likability most of the time. Having a humble character who shows his strength through his actions and deeds rather than words is way more effective to actually show the skills and powers of the character being put to use and also makes him more likable. This can be applied to so many characters out there like Steve Rogers, Luke Skywalker, Matthew Maroc and He-Man himself. We have all these characters who are strong in their own respective ways and yet their likability mostly lies on being well-written charismatic characters, rather than their strength alone. This is what most screenwriters nowadays can't understand about female characters, creating either unlikable pricks or Mary Sue's, whose main character trait is to be very strong as a result. Ow! I fought the forces of Snake Mountain. Did you think I couldn't defend against your attack? But my dad says... No amount of preparation can make you ready for the unpredictable. <laughs> With all due respect to the king, that doesn't apply to me. I know everything there is to know about battle, the palace, race hole. Wow, this reminds me of something. Oh, me, I don't know. PhD, cancer <laughs> oh, biology oh. scientist, oh, I work girl. in a biotech company, we make COVID-19 testing kits, oh. stuff like that. <gasps> You play stupid games, you win stupid prizes. Who could have thought? During the climax of episode 1, He-Man absorbs the explosion in order to save the universe, knowing that doing so will culminate in his death. What was supposed to be an emotional moment when the king and queen learn about Prince Adam's death and the revelation that he was He-Man is ruined because of Tila. In the scene, we have a mother mourning the death of her own son, the shock, sadness and rage of a grieving father, a heart-wrenched soldier delivering these devastating news but the empowered female character here somehow managed to make everything about herself. I have laid my life on the line for every one of you, which are all a pack of liars. No! God, please, no! No! Let's make this character rant and lecture about her feelings to the very people who are mourning the death of a loved one, because this is totally what charismatic, likable characters do, am I right? In episode 2, it's revealed that all the turn in the universe will perish if the sword of power is not reforged, but Tila somehow manages to make it all about her again. Didn't she just listen to the part where all universe will vanish without magic? Her feelings are irrelevant in this scenario when all of them will die if magic is not restored. And also in episode 2, Tila now has this brand new original haircut, which was certainly not shown over and over and over again. It's just me imagining things. And she was also pretty rude and inconsiderate to this lady who was very grateful for them for rescuing this valuable object because that object meant a lot to her. And Tila, as an insufferable prick she is, says like, you should forget about magic and just use technology instead of whatever. Throughout episode 3, some characters are all about how Tila believed in them, helped them as a way to show how amazing she is. Except that they talk more about what an amazing person she is than she has effectively shown being an amazing person, because most of the time she just sucks. In episode 4, they go to Subterranea to find one of the halves of the sword. In order to find it, Tila had to overcome her greatest fear, which happens to be nothing more nothing less than her own fate, because surprise surprise, our strong female character here is scared to death about her fate, so she pretends to be ordinary because of course. 
she knows that there is so much more to her. I'm noticing the pairing here and I'm not sure if I like it. Finally, in episode 5, we have the worst scene of this entire show. He-Man didn't hurt me, Adam. You did. And I couldn't even scream at you for it because you were gone. I died. Yeah, and the rest of us had to live with it. No, God, please, no, no. Screw this is the first time you see you in years after you sacrificed your life to save the world and died. I'm gonna rant about how you keeping your secret hurt my feelings. Because I lied? Yes, because you lied. You don't even understand what it did to me, do you? What it did to you? No! 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 You're ranting to someone who died to save the universe, which also benefits you as a resident of that universe. Is it possible for this character to get any worse? The point is, I understand Tila being upset for Adam keeping his secret from her. However, if we put on a scale which D has more impact in their current situation and for the audience, especially the OG show fans, Adam sacrificing his life to save the universe, or Tila's feelings, there's no way Tila's feelings outweigh that. And the fact that Tila is one hack of an annoying, insufferable character in this show from the beginning makes her behavior in this particular scene worse and her character even more dislikable if such a thing is possible. Therefore, if the creators wanted us to relate to her and to her reasons, their attempts failed miserably. And the scene also leads me to my next point. Tila struggles with Amber Syndrome. For those of us who watched Amazon Prime show Invincible, Mark decided to reveal his superhero ID to his girlfriend. But she reveals that she had already figured out his hero identity some time ago and trashed him for keeping his secret from her. Did you hear what I just said? Ugh, I know you're a superhero. You know? You, you know? I'm not an idiot. I figured it out weeks ago. Then why are we fighting? We're fighting because you lied to me. You made me feel stupid and unimportant. It's a secret identity. And because you don't trust me. Uh, Amber! Fly away, flyboy. Yikes. Teal in the show is Amber from The Invincible all over again. Because we have a main character who is likable and charismatic, they face many dangers in their fight against evil, and in Mark's case, he almost gets killed, whereas he men dies. And after all that, the empowered female character here, somehow, manages to make it all about herself, while disregarding all the hardships and dangers those characters had to face, because her feelings were more relevant. This is messed up writing, absolutely poor characterization, it baffles me, and on top of that, we are supposed to like these characters, otherwise it's because we are either scared or hate strong women, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> so towards the end of episode 5, Adam gets killed, again, after minutes of coming back to life, which also made me realize that they actually killed almost all male characters of the show. Wow, what is it doing here? And Skeletor is a master of the universe now. Wow, guys, good job. So yeah, those were my thoughts about Masters of the Universe revelation. Anyway, the OG show He-Man is Hollywood's newest prey, and the show's existence is a complete joke. This is yet another example of producers not having original good ideas, so they just make another show based on a previous existing show, because this way they don't have to think as hard as they had to in order to create something new from scratch. So it's like, 50% of the job is already done here, while they ruin everything with their awful ideas altogether. He-Man was shoved aside to make way for the strong female character instead, while serving as bait to attract OG fans into watching it. Teal is unbelievably unlikable in the show for reasons already explained throughout this video. She's arrogant, whiny, self-centered, and rude. She also gets really masculine in terms of physical appearance, by the way even though Netflix claims that her body build was supposed to be more realistic. When actually, OG Tila was inspired by a real woman. You don't get more realistic than that. She was inspired by Gal Gadot's Wonder Woman and Korra as well, apparently, even though those two examples are the complete opposite of what Tila turned out to be in the show. Also, Tila's voice acting was annoying. I usually don't struggle with voice actings, but surprisingly enough, I really did not enjoy Tila's voice acting here. The new character, whose name I don't even bother remembering, was pretty mad as well. She wasn't Tila like bad, but I still couldn't care less about her. <laughs> and the other characters were okay in my opinion. So that's it for today's video. Thank you for watching, and if you like my content, consider subscribing, and I'll see you next time around.